Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome. Welcome to Her Success Story June edition. And welcome to the final month in the first half of 2023. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> like, did we just say Happy New Year? Like, two days ago <laughs> oh my goodness time flew so fast but gratefully we're here we're here today we're grateful for you know the gift of life the opportunity to be alive today um so thank god thank god thank god if you can hear me please let me know in the comment section i would love to see your comments please if you can hear me let me know in the comment section. Our guests are in the back seat and we're going to be bringing them on shortly. But please let us connect. How are you doing today? Happy Salah to everyone who is celebrating. Um, Eid Mubarak. I hope you enjoyed your holiday. Um, please let me know if you can hear me. Let's do a quick sound check and then uh, we're going to kick off the conversation tonight so please let me know in the comments if you can hear me please let me know in the comments if you can hear me so i'll be looking down from time to time please permit me um my cats the cats in the, the house is just <laughs> looking for attention um yes please let me know in the comments if you can hear me i can't see any comments yet um i don't know if that's a network problem or if that's a delay in the stream but please if you can hear me please let me know in the comment section type something in the comments let me know that you can hear me yes 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 it is short while from now i'm going to bring on our guest on the screen right again if this is your first time joining us on her success story a success story is put together it's an initiative by the women of rubies inc um and it is actually to share the stories, the success stories of women, especially Nigerian women, at least for now, Nigerian women living in Nigeria and in Canada. So we're here to you know, kind of spotlight them um, to listen to their success story, how they got to where they are today, what success means to them, how are they coping with the success, what are some challenges that they've gone through, right? Because again, you and I know that there's really no success without failures. Most times, the people that we see and we celebrate today are the people that have gone through series of failures, right? Um, of course, there are exceptions to the rules, but you know, most times, people who we consider super successful today, they've had their fair share of failures. They've had their fair share of things not working out for them. But now today, they were able to weather the storm go through all the challenges, come out on the other side. And now we admire them. We look up to them. We want to be like them. But sometimes we actually do not know the stories behind them, right? So that we are guided, even in the way that we admire them. We are guided to know that, see, you need to put in some work. There's work on your path to be done, right? So this is why we are shining the, um, shining the um, highlights, basically, or shining the... Uh, what's the call? Headlights. Why is this light thing leaving my mouth anyway? <laughs> we are highlighting um, these amazing women from Nigeria and Canada. So tonight we have two amazing women that we're going to be talking to today. Still, I cannot see any comments. Please um, drop your comments. I don't know if that's a network for my part, but please, if you can hear me clearly, please drop a comment so that I'm not just speaking and you guys cannot hear me, all right? So please drop a comment in the comment section if you can hear me, all right? Thank you very much for your cooperation. And that's also how I know that we are conversing. All right, so today we're having two beautiful guests. Yay, finally, I see a comment. Yes, yes, yes. Sira Menes says, I am excited to be here. I am excited to have you here. Please let me know where are you connected from, Sira? Where are you connecting from? Are they, okay, Yinka says we can hear you clearly. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the feedback. 
All right, so I'm just going to dive into it quickly. Now, we have two delectable guests in the studio sitting pretty waiting to be on the screen. Our guest today, in no particular order, today we're going to be speaking with Eno Sam, who is the president of Brilliant Entrepreneurs and Writers Academy, BEWA, a business community of over 100,000 writers, authors, and content creators. She is the organizer of the biggest creative writing and public speaking competition in Africa, BEWA Content, uh, BEWA Content Creation Competition, featuring the illustrious African Writers Award. This competition is aimed at encouraging a rapid rise of creative African creators and raising the world's finest writers. She is an author of 10 books, oh my God, a book project consultant, of course, a writing coach, yes, because she's my coach, <laughs> an editor who has worked thousands of authors, who has worked thousands of authors through the process of writing, editing, publishing, and launching their brilliant books. Eno is the editor-in-chief of Bewa Magazine, a yearly publication that celebrates illustrious African writers in business and document their inspiring stories. Named and recognized amongst the top 50 most inspiring authors in Nigeria alongside the renowned Wale Shoyinka, Sam Adeyemi, Chimaman Dangozi Adichi, and other inspiring Nigerian authors, she's always at the forefront promoting a reading and writing culture in Africa. She has been nominated for several esteemed awards, including Outstanding Female Entrepreneurs by the Entrepreneur Africa Awards and Leadership Awards by the Iconic Brands Awards. Edna is an African change maker, passionate about youth empowerment and development. And this has birthed her Let's Talk Youth LYT campaign project in commemoration of the International Youth Day. LYT has been converted into a free book to be distributed to over 1 million youths around the world. That's our first guest. Uh, our second guest today is Fola, simply called Fola, the founder and lead career coach at Win Finite Consulting, a prominent cybersecurity training firm based in Canada. With over a decade of experience in the technology industry and a captivating blend of expertise and passion for empowering professionals, she has been making waves within the cybersecurity career coaching space and has become a trusted guide and inspiration in the industry. She has, ex she has extensive expertise um, in cybersecurity, IT governance, risk and compliance, that's GRC, um, IT audit and network security gained while working with organizations in the consulting, financial and telecommunication sectors. She's highly qualified with a range of certifications, including ISO 27001 LA, CDPSE, CISA, CSM and ITIL, which further enhance her knowledge and skills in the field. Over the past three years, her impact has been felt by numerous professionals who have successfully transitioned into the dynamic domains of cybersecurity under our guidance. Our remarkable ability to unlock hidden potentials and nurture talent has paved the way for countless individuals to thrive in their newfound career. Through, professional, through personalized training and tailored guidance, she equips her mentees with the essential skills and knowledge necessary to excel in the industry. Outside of her professional endeavors, Fola is an avid advocate for work-life balance, recognizing the importance of nurturing personal well-being alongside career growth. She is passionate about fostering diverse and inclusive environments and empowering individuals to achieve fulfillment in both their personal and professional lives. She loves reading, dancing, and spending quality time with our family. I had to just go through their profile so that you know the caliber of women that we're bringing on board tonight. So you want to sit pretty, grab a cup, your, your cup of tea if you like sipping tea or your bottle of water if you like sipping water. I've got my water bottle with me as well because I'm going to be sipping some water as we learn and hear the stories of these two amazing women 
who we have on board tonight. If you're ready to get to have this lovely women, this powerhouses on the screen, let me see you type in the comment section. Say ready, 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 ready. Let me see you type ready in the comment section. Yes, yes, yes. Sarah says, I am in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Fantastic, Sarah. Um, it's great to have you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us tonight. All right, so please, please, let me see you say, let me see you type ready. Mm -hmm. Let me read your ready in the comment section as I bring on our guest tonight. Who is ready? Who is ready? Anybody ready for us? Yes, Sarah, I love that. Thank you, Sarah, for saying ready, ready, ready. Sarah is ready. I don't know if any other person is ready, but because Sarah is ready, I am also ready because our guests also, they are ready and ready to share their stories. Without further ado, please put your virtual hands together. Use your favorite emoji, fire, drum roll, dancing, whatever works for you or whichever is your best. Put it in the comment section now as I bring on our guest to the stage. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Fantastic. Eno, can you hear me? Okay, and I can't hear you yet. I think your mic is muted. Can you kindly check? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes, yes, yes we can. Fantastic. Awesome, awesome. How are you? How are you ladies doing tonight? I'm doing so well. I've been in the background. I love your energy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. That has been really nice. And Edwin, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so let me bring it yeah. closer. Ah, ah, Eno, what is this? Why are you wearing yellow? What's this? <laughs> <laughs> why are you copying me? Like, why are you copying me? Must you copy me? <laughs> uh, we, we have not spoken in, in months. Oh my goodness. Isn't this, months? Isn't this interesting? No, we've spoken in weeks. We've spoken in weeks. I remember. Well, it's still in weeks. Yes. It's been a while. <laughs> we'll set it up later. <laughs> Anyways, it's yes. good to have you here. It's good to have you here. Thank you for availing yourself to be here. Um, Fola, what's the time where you are now? I know you're in Canada. It's 3.14 p.m., so we're still in the afternoon okay. here. Ah, okay, okay, fantastic. Anyways, um, it's eleven p. Is it? It's past eleven p.m. here in the UAE, um, and it's past eight p.m. in Nigeria, and it's past three p.m. in Canada. Isn't tech just beautiful? Look at <laughs> us from different continents just chilling together on this platform. You guys that are here, I don't know. You are blessed though. Ah, uh -uh. so please share this link with somebody now. Who should come and gain inspiration? We should come and get inspiration from these two beautiful ladies right here. Now, I'm going to start with this question. I, I really love to start with this question because where we tagged it has success story. And we all know that success is subjective because mm -hmm. what success means to you is different from what it means to me. In fact, what success means to me today might be different from what it means to me three months to come, right? So I'm going to start with that question. And any of you can um, go ahead and answer first. When we talk about success, what does success mean to you? Any mini money more? Anybody <laughs> want to go? <laughs> Let me start by um, sharing what I feel success means to me. Um, for me, I mean, when I was, when I was like uh, many years ago, I used to think success was about what I have, you know, you know, success is like, okay, when you get, you pass your examination, oh, I'm, I'm a success. And then if I do this, I'm a success. No, for me, success means two different things. Number one, success to me means that I am a better version of myself every single day. All right. I'm a better version of myself, not just because I'm better than someone else. No, because when I look at myself today, a year ago, I'm different. I'm bigger, I'm better. So that's what success means to me, number one. Then number two, success means to me, um, I don't think success means to me is like when my life is a source of inspiration to someone, as someone can say, oh, if you could do this thing, you know, 
I can do it as well. You know, I was very surprised. Um, you know, I, I think I shared that on my on Instagram or on Facebook some days ago of how just far away, I, I, I think, is it or your state? Or your state? Children, like primary school children, just printed my picture on social media and they were so excited about the picture and then they were talking about the success story. People I've not met before. I don't even know how they got the picture. How, but they were so excited and I could see those young, but I cried. Like, I was like, go, I was touched. Like, these are small children. They don't. Even, they are just like in that small community. How just that small story, you know? And they were sharing, and they were so happy about it. And I was like, that is success to me. That my phone can listen to my story anywhere you are. I'm like, oh my god, this inspired me to become better, a better version of myself. So that's what success means to me. And talking about this definition of success, I also, you know, get to realize that sometimes uh, our refusal to expose ourselves or our, our refusal to tell our stories can actually limit other people. Oh, I'm too shy to come out. I don't want to do this and all that. But someone out there is dying because you refuse to come out. That's not success. So to me, these are the two basic ways that I define success, actually. Absolutely fantastic. I love it. I love your definition. All right, Fola, what, what, what does success mean to you? Okay, so for me, success means a lot of things. But firstly, I will talk about um, personal fulfillment. Hmm. Success means a lot of things to so many people, right? For some people, success means, you know, um, just the glitz, you know, the power, achievements. But for me personally, it's a combination of different things. So I'm looking at what, what have I achieved? What am I, what are my achievements? Success to me also means stability right? It means mm. personal growth, continuous learning, me being a better version of myself. So when I look at all the goals I've set out, have I achieved those goals? In mm. what manner have I achieved those goals? Am I doing something that I will be proud of several years to come, right? So for me, you know, success combines all of these things, my values, my aspirations, my achievements, basically. So for me, that's how I would define success. Absolutely fantastic. I love the correlation between what both of you have shared as success, being personal achievement and just knowing that I'm a better version. I'm growing. I set the goal. I work towards it. I achieve it. And that is success to me. And that's why I also said on my part, like, you know, um, success per time can actually up upgrade or change as we evolve, as we evolve as human beings we begin to also evolve in our definition of what success means to us. But it is very important. I love, you know, the one person. I'm a one person person as well to say, you know what? The fact that I exist, if one person, only one person can look at me and say, oh, if she did it, I can do it. I am showing up and I'm showing up daily just for that one person. So thank you for sharing that with us. I, I just going through your profile, both of you, and I'm like, ah, ah. What's all this? Eh? <laughs> you know, your profiles are the kind of profiles people read and be like, God, when? How did you put this? <laughs> when, when? <laughs> like, when did you start? How did you start that you've, you know, gathered this, you know, document this amount of achievement to your name? So I'm going to start with you, Eno. Now you've, you've been an award winner. You are writing. Your community is over a thousand, a hundred thousand writers, entrepreneurs, and content creator. Why did you choose writing as your niche? Of all the niches to choose, I mean, why writing? Especially in Africa, you know, before now, I mean, before now, yes, like 10, 15 years ago, it is easy to say that if you want to hide anything from Africa, put it inside a book. But I think that narrative is changing quite fast because in the last five years, especially, we've seen a rise in the number of Africans and especially Nigerians, young Nigerians, just churning out amazing books. So why did you pick writing as your niche? Okay. Mm. Where will I start from now? There, there are many <laughs> sides of the story. But let me start from somewhere. Um, Interesting thing is that I didn't even choose writing as a niche. That's that's what, what I want to even start with because I didn't choose writing. So writing is an accidental discovery that I had along my journey. So I'm a graduate in accounting. So I finished school and I wanted to be a banker, you know, and I was like, I want to be a banker. I'll, that's what I want to do because my dad was a banker. So I, I got me 
can go to work and I loved and it was so funny that my I wanted to be a banker because I loved how bankers dress like dress. Copy dress. <laughs> that was just you wouldn't believe me, but that was my dream. I was like, I want to be a banker, I want to be a banker. But at the end of the day, the banking jobs did not come. I went for different bank interviews and all that. But you know, you just meet crowd, you know, Nigerian, everybody's applying to get this job, and you're like, ah, what's happening here? So but I used to write as a child, like as a as a child, like when I was eight, seven, I just used to write stories and so not serious, nothing serious and all that. So in the midst of all the chaos and all the disappointment of oh, this bank does never I said, okay, let me start writing. So forget my worries now. I just started writing. I used I started writing fictional stories, like I used to write stories and all that. And you know, I could just write those things and I started writing just like that. And then I remember one day I, I wrote a story. I wrote a story on, on Facebook and on my profile and it had over 25,000 likes and over, um, I think over like, I can't remember how many it is now, but over 9,000 shares or so. I can't remember the last video on my profile. That was just writing. And I was like, ah, this writing thing is really serious. Like people are, people are really saying, wow, I'm inspired. I'm inspired. I'm inspired. I'm inspired. And I did not run any ads to that post. So I was wondering, wait, so there's something in this writing that people, you know, that I, I can actually do. So people were so inspired by it. And that's how I said, okay, let me start writing. And when I started writing more, people were like, oh, would you teach me how to write? Then I started writing my own book. And then when I wrote my book and people started buying the book, and they were like, oh, I, I enjoy this. Can you help me? Can you show me how to write? That's how I started. So it's not like I sat down and said, oh, writing is my dream job. Writing is no, it just started from that part. And that's why I realized that sometimes, our parts are not clear from the beginning. And sometimes when mm. you experience disappointment, you experience things that are not working the way you plan, sometimes it's just God saying, hey, there just there might just be a better you. path for you. Because I'm sure that mm. if I was a banker, I would never write any book. If I, if I got that job, <laughs> as I, when I did, I would not write that book and all that. And again, I did not have any experienced writer around me. Everybody was like, oh, you have to get it. You have to be a banker and all that. So that exposure was not there. So that's just how I started out writing. That is Sorry. really, really interesting. And I love that, you know, your story is like that, that you know what, it wasn't a planned something because yes. I was, I'm going to ask uh, Fola a similar question in that regard, you know. Um, but interesting, interesting to know that you did not set out to be a writer, but look at the amazing impact that you're making today in the lives of thousands. And I hope you guys that are listening, you're listening so that you know that sometimes you just have to follow through with what is before you. And then on your journey to making that move, clarity would come and then you will get to know what you are cut out to do. Now, Fola, your, your, your bio again is just, it's just fantastic. I checked out your website. And I love what you said, your, your personal statement. You say you help professionals transition into tech with no prior tech experience. And you've been in this field for over 10 years. Now, in over these 10 years, you have over 15 plus career switches. That means 15 different people from different industries switch to tech by your guidance. You have, you have reached over six plus countries that you've covered. You have five-star reviews on Google. You have over a thousand successful students. And that is just so powerful. My question to you is, did you always know that you will be this successful? If yes, what then were you looking at? Like, how did you set the goal just to set the stone and say, this is what it's going to be? If the answer is no, like, maybe like you're like N or two, is what, this was not planned. You know how they say it, like, no, I didn't choose it. It chose me. If that was it, then what was the anchor that kept you going until you got to this point that you're in at right now. Okay. Thanks, um, EJ. It's nice to know that you visited my website. But basically, again, it's a similar story. Very unplanned. So even me moving to Canada was also unplanned. All right. It wow. just happened. <laughs> I mean, I started, I found myself here. Basically, I did some prep work. So I moved here. And although I've been in the cybersecurity industry for several years, I never really thought about, you know, coaching, you know, helping people to transition. But when I moved into Canada, I got a job so fast. And then a lot of people around me were still struggling. So when people mm. move here, especially non-tech people, 
Technology is borderless. So irrespective of the country you're coming from, your certifications are globally accepted. But for non-tech mm. people, right? When you move from one country to another, you don't realize that, oh, I might need to go back to school. I might need to get called to the bar in this new country. So they struggle a whole lot. So that was how it started. People around me, you know, reached out. I know you're a tech person. I know you used to do this back home. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to transition. Can you coach me? Can you help me? So that's where it started from. It started from one person. I remember then, you know, it was so informal. We're using like WhatsApp, you know, first person got a job, second person, and then it just started growing, you know, through word of mouth, referrals, and all of that. It started growing. And I derived so much fulfillment, like seeing people like you making their lives better. I've worked with couples, I've worked with siblings, right? The husband joins and then gets a job, and then the wife comes to say, Oh, my husband. So it's been really good, like in terms of what I do. And the best part of it is, it's what I already do, right? So I'm happy at the fact that I can take my, my skills, my expertise, and then I can impact people's lives. Okay. So a lot of immigrants coming here, settling down, you see a lot of people, you know, doing survival jobs, or they're just not happy with what they do, right? So mm. everyone knows that tech is the in thing right now. Like cybersecurity is a buzzword. So the fact that I'm able to help people you know, find stability, get the job of their dreams without spending too much money. So a lot of people want to transition into tech, but because they, are, they just don't believe that, oh, because I don't have a computer science degree or I need to learn how to code. I must know C sharp. I must know Python. This means I can't transition, <laughs> right? You must know Oracle. Nice, EJ. So you know some databases, right? So that's the general thoughts. General, mm. a lot of people believe that, right? But... I'm on my mission to get the word out there. Tell people mm. right now, the cybersecurity space is not very diverse. A lot of we don't have a lot of women. It's a historically male-dominated field. You have jumped, you have jumped ahead. <laughs> continue, continue, because I was coming there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because even right now, when women call me, before they make a decision, there's certain like when the guys call me, immediately they want to move in. But the ladies, it's mm. different, right? So even this industry wants to be more diverse, more inclusive. They want more women, right? As women were so talented, right? So we need to bring our value. We need to, mm. our voices must be heard. We need to amplify mm. our voices, right? Mm. And there's just so much around cybersecurity. So whether you want to be very technical, you don't want to be technical, there's a space for everyone. So in summary, that's how I found myself here. And now that I'm here, mm. I only want to do more. Right, absolutely. I want to help people, especially the underrepresented people. Right, mm. we can, you know, shatter the ceilings, make names for ourselves in this field. We didn't come to this, you know, area just for nothing. Mm. Nigerians were super talented, right? Absolutely. So, if we're able to use our talents the right way, we get the right guidance, then the sky is our limit. Absolutely, I 100% agree with you. And I was going to even come there eventually, but before I go, there, the inclusive part and everything is I wanted to ask you because you've been in this field for quite a while. Um, but cybersecurity in itself just became like a uh, like a known a global known phenomenon just like a couple of years, right? I think I think since COVID actually that's when it's like everybody's now like cyber security, cyber security. But it has always been what inspired you to actually go that route from the beginning. Was this cybersecurity you studied or you studied something? In line of tech and then chose cyber security as you saw the trend move okay that's a fantastic question so as you've said cyber security just um it just became a big thing a few years ago right before covid mm -hmm. cyber security was a big thing but cyber security never stood on its own but when you look at technology technology keeps evolving right so mm -hmm. the more we use technology to make our lives more comfortable more convenient we're now you know using a lot of internet-enabled devices, your smart homes, your internet banking. So with all of this, you know, keep, you know, all of that. That is why cybersecurity has now become so significant that it is now able to stand on its own. So several mm. years ago, when you go to uni, there were no courses like cybersecurity. It was computer science or engineering or computer engineering, right? But now 
when you go to the universities, cybersecurity is now a standalone course. Of course. Mm. Right? So basically, what is making cybersecurity so big right now is the type of world we live in. Everything is connected. Everything is on the internet. Everybody has digital assets. You have confidential information that you want to safeguard, right? Organizations yeah. have information systems, you know, sensitive data that they need to protect. And there are a lot of more hackers, malicious attackers, bad threats. So these people are working nonstop to get all that confidential information. As such, mm -hmm. organizations need to be very big on cybersecurity. So, so many roles keep opening up. About two, three years ago, we didn't have so many roles. We didn't have third party risk management. So it was just mm -hmm. pen testing. Everybody wanted to be a pen tester. They wanted to either be on the blue team or on the red team. But cybersecurity has grown, you know, extensively in the last few years. So that's why cyber everybody now wants to do cybersecurity. And one more thing is with automation, you know, as automation grows, a lot of jobs are also either going away or will be going away a in the near one. future, mm. right? So a lot of people are now thinking towards, oh, how do I future-proof my career? I want to have a career that no matter how big artificial intelligence, automation, robotic, you know, goes, my job is here to stay. It can only get better. Mm. Mm. Mm, that's fantastic. Okay. I'm going to come from that angle to you, Eno. Talking about tech and AI especially. As a writing coach who has been in this industry for quite a while, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, your journey is close to a decade as well, if not above a decade. Close. It's getting close. Or at least Maybe. halfway there or something. Yes. Right? But now we can see that there's a rise in AI right? ChatGPT is everywhere. It is easy now for everyone to become an author, right? So for you as a writing coach, what do you see? What are some of the challenges that you're currently facing as a writer? Do you think, let me, let me ask the question like this. Do you, I, do, you, do you have a course for alarm as a writing coach? Knowing that there is AI now, am I going to become irrelevant because People would not need me to assist them again to, be, to, to offer their books. Is there any fear of sorts for you as a writing coach or as a book coach? Okay. So to say? Mm, that's an interesting question. Um, funny enough, there's no fear because, you know, I think AI is yet to just en enhance, like to help out, not like take over the job because, you know, I've used a couple of tools, you know, tools that like assist assistants like that. And they don't really quite work out as I don't think any AI um tool can actually replace the human um inter intervention hundred percent. It can help, it can assist, but not hundred percent. So there's no cause for alarm. Yeah, there's no cause for alarm. Mm -hmm. Any anything can come up, any app can come up, but it can actually like help us speed up some processes, but not overtake everything. So let me give you a typical example. For example, there was a particular app that was that is usually uh, I think we had that experience, right, with Grammarly, for example. Let's start, let's start with apps mm, like, mm, like, like mm, Grammarly, for mm. example. And you've edited a book. You know this thing. You know the grammar. Like, you, you, you are an expert in this thing. Like, you, you read your dictionary, you know this thing. And then you use your human um, intelligence to arrange the script. And then you then bring in a software, and it just scatters everything. And then you look at it, you're like, this doesn't make sense at all. So, mm. you know, at some point, it just scatters the whole thing. So if you're not smart enough, if you're not intelligent, if you don't know the job for yourself, you'll just be confused. All right? I've mm. seen some people who say, oh, they wrote things with um, chat, uh, this, this app, you know? And then yeah. the, 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 the correlation, like the paragraphs are disjointed and all that. I think those apps are good when you already know your thing. So when you get them, just add up together. Not like they can replace Absolutely. you 100%. I'm like, I can't even use any of them. I use my head. You know, and all that so that's what i think absolutely actually. absolutely i was going to go yeah. there so the next question for me for you is in the same line now we're, we're, we have established the fact that see there's nothing to be afraid of with ai as a writer as especially for you as a, as a writing coach what do you think as well that it is or what are your thoughts that the app itself or, or the ai because of the people who do not understand how it is used and who wants to go the short route? Do you think it waters down your work as a writing coach? Because like you rightly said, somebody who is... Oh, writing, I thought you were even asking does, her. Sorry, come again. No, Sorry. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. <laughs> I like, you, you know, somebody, somebody who, 
who is not who has not mastered the art of putting their thoughts together and then they now go to a, a, a an app or an ai like chat gpt of course it's your the quality of answer you get is dependent on the quality of question you share so my question is what are your takes on even the ai actually watering down the work that you are doing or watering down the quality of books of write-offs that are being churned out now why because it's accessible to everyone okay so at this point i think we need to actually like you know every author should actually take responsibility for their work and that's mm. one reason why i created my community and i call it brilliant entrepreneurs and writers academy like if your book is not brilliant then you, you don't put it out there because your name is stamped on it and that book goes around and goes around so it's a personal journey i mean anybody can just write something and hit the printing press and just dump it there everybody has the right to write and i mean with the with, with currently you can actually publish an ebook as easy as abc i mean you could just Absolutely. publish it publish it onto seller or amazon or anything drop it down there you know and then move on nobody's going to stop you but it depends on how responsible you are for your project you know what mm -hmm. do you want to do you want this book to stand the test of time and what do you want the reader's experience to be it all depends on you so we cannot exactly like collectively just say okay let's put an end to this whole menace everybody has to take responsibility and as far as you don't take responsibility i can't take that responsibility for you because you have the right to actually publish whatever you want so that's what i think actually that's a very serious concern because it's watering down the quality of books that are being thrown out it's really really bad yeah. it's actually, actually very very bad but you know with conversations like this we can actually help to eradicate this and actually create more awareness on it yeah Absolutely, absolutely, because it's becoming a bit scary. And, you yeah. know, I don't know, uh, Fola, you are in the tech space with AI and everything. I just feel like um, I, I don't know what intervention that you, are, you know, are people in the tech space are putting in place. If there's anything like that, please educate us. In that, fine, this app or this software or this platforms are there to aid our work. They're there to help us. But because of wrong usage, it can actually go the wrong way for example students right are no longer trying to think before now if you have an essay you at least do your research have your your resources but right now it's more like first things first you go it's like gradually people are gradually uh, abdicating their thinking process to the ai what are some of the you know precautions that you think people should start to take you know at least from this point for people who are going to watch this, like, see, don't fall into that trap because it's easy to actually fall into it. Ease is sweet. Okay, so I'll take this in two ways. The first way is for students especially. So there are different types of AI softwares. You have some that would help you write. You also have mm -hmm. some other AI software that would help you detect if your essay was written by an AI, right? Oh, but the thing about technology and controls is with the right person, there are ways around bypassing it. But mm. the way I see AI is, it's both ways. Even before, you know, AI came into play, I know that there was maybe some people, you know, even their productivity was low. The quality of work they were churning out was low. So I'm not going to chalk that up to just AI, right? Because it also depends on the way and manner in which you use AI. If you're able to give it the right instructions to follow, give it all that background information, context, and specify the way your response would be. Now, my worry about AI is more around data privacy, right? Mm. You know, recently, when you use AI, most times you get so used to using AI that you forget all about those data privacy concerns. And you don't know who has access to your data. So mm. it is one way in which people can easily get hacked by mm. right so i'm more concerned around the security issues around using ai but in terms of the quality of work i think that is up to whoever is using that tool right so for schools i'm sure they also have another ai tool that will pick up no, you know no. whether you've used ai or not although there are certain AI tools that would actually help you humanify your essays. So, absolutely. <laughs> it's a bottle of the fittest. Exactly. Now, the good thing is the world is watching, right? So, in security, you have what you call best practice standards. Oh, my God. Right? So, I know that right now, 
they are already working on requirements, requirements for AI, right? So when cloud came in, you know, cloud two is, I wouldn't call it new, but it also another emerging area, right? So with cloud, you now have so many requirements that organizations must follow when using cloud. So similarly, AI is already following the same way. Yes. Yeah. So like your NIST, your um, ISO 27001. So all those best practice standards are also going to start creating best practice controls for AI, especially around the distribution of data, right? Mm. Making sure that because you, you, okay, imagine you use AI, but because AI has some vulnerabilities, and then somebody is able to hack you and get unauthorized access into your system through the AI software. And remember that this AI software that most people use are not licensed, mm -hmm. right? So that's another, you know, another way or point in which unauthorized access can be gained. So my worry is not, it's slightly different from you, you and Eno. Mine is more around the security side of things, not necessarily the outputs because I use mm. AI once in a while. And what I've noticed is it depends on the instructions you put in. It can be really good, right? Mm. At times it's too good because people are now, they're not going to think anymore. They're not going to exercise. Yeah. You're not going to even try to think. Any little thing, they're just going to AI, AI, blah, 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 yeah. blah. And, it's, yeah. and then also for productivity, it's going to get to a point that when you work in any professional environment and you don't use AI, you're going to be, you're not going to be as productive as your colleagues. Yeah, you're going to be All right? Lagging. You're going to be lagging behind because, again, when you work for an organization, a lot of they care about your deliverables, your yeah. outputs, the results. And the speed. And the speed, right? So you need to weigh your pros and cons for sure. Now, even still talking about AI, you know, even for teams now, for some organizations that have stayed using AI with their teams, it's to improve productivity. When you go into meetings, AI is going to just write out the script, you document know. your minutes mm -hmm. of meetings for you. So, I mean, there are different ways to look at this. Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 I mean, anyways. But what would you say to quickly? Uh, in, since we are still here with the security and what you're worried about, obviously, as a cybersecurity expert, that is the top on the list for you. What are some um, simple things? that everyday people that are not tech inclined but are now in the ai space you know open to these threats that they are not even aware of what are some precautions that we can take to just at least minimize the possibility of being hacked for example okay so one would be you need to have an antivirus on your system, right? Antivirus is so basic, but if you don't have an antivirus or if you have an antivirus, but it doesn't have the latest virus signature, then that's a problem. So at least you want to do that. You want to make sure that your systems are patched, right? So if you're maybe using a laptop, make sure that your operating system has the latest patches so that that way, even if you know any bad actor tries to gain unauthorized access through that software tool, it makes it a bit difficult for them to maybe escalate privileges or steal information. You might also want to um, segregate your Wi-Fi in such a way that any laptop or mobile device that you're using to access free AI softwares do not contain confidential information. You also want to make sure that when you're asking AI to do something for you, make sure you're not putting PII information, like your social security number, your, like any information that can help or aid a malicious attacker to steal your digital identity, right? So make sure you don't put your financial information, make sure you're not using a device that you use for your financial transactions. That's another thing. So imagine your phone, everybody, most people, including me, you use your phones for practically everything. You might have installed maybe word tune or needs so that when you're texting or when you're typing, it helps make sure that you're using the right, you know, tenses, grammar and all of that. So make sure that you're not using the same device for some of these financial transactions. You don't have your PII, your SIM. A lot of people here, your social security number is stored on your phone. And then you're using AI, a tool that is not very secure, right? Because it's still relatively new. And we don't have security standards controls around AI. Yes. Even going to ChatGPT, 
there are limitations in there. It gives a just that nobody follows it. It says do not put confidential data, right? Do not put PI information. But when we start using AI, we get so used to it that we just forget all of that. So we must be very security conscious, right? And you also don't want to use AI on your organization system. For most organizations, they have configured, you know, the laptops or devices they've given to you in such a way that you cannot install applications. But again, it depends on the industry. For some other organizations, they are not so strict. So again, even if you want to use AI, keep it to maybe your personal system, right? Mm. If I were to be hacked, right, what kind of information can they steal and what damage can be done with this information? Fantastic. Thank you so much for that information. I know it's a bit scary when you think about all of it. Say, hey, how many things I now want to be like, ah, okay, I will not use laptop again. I will not use phone again. <laughs> Let's go back to Stone Age or 3310. No again. smartphone. <laughs> the funny part is, we're talking about AI here, right? But there's even more to be to actually think about. We all use smartphones, smart devices, especially now that, you know, everybody wants to do internet. Of Alexa. Alexa, one. right? There's this movie called Luther. It was showing on Netflix. If anybody has seen that movie, it's going to get you thinking. You have so many confidential conversations in your room. At times, you don't want someone to hear. So you lock your door, you do all of that. But Alexa is there, listening to everything yeah. you do, right? Your mobile phone is there. Your mobile phone has an audio. If somebody hacks into your phone, they can listen into all your conversations. They can turn on the camera remotely, see what, I mean, it's just crazy, right? So adding AI into the mix of all these other issues just makes it very significant. Like, very, very interesting. Exactly. Wow. Okay, we will we'll, we'll try not to be afraid and see <laughs> how, how much of security conscious we can be because it's scary. You know, you have conversation with somebody literally and then we talk about a product or you mention a product and then you carry your phone and you actually see the adverts of that product. You don't even need to go and visit the website anymore. You're just speaking about yes. it and then they're following you with the ads. It's scary. Yes, it's really it scary, but anyways, um, we, I guess being aware is the first step to know yes. that these things are there and we need to take precaution, all right? right. So, Eno, let me come back to you as, you know, as we're actually, you know, talking about the success of your industry and everything. Where do you see, you know, um, the, the writing community that you're building? Where do you see it going? Because I know you're a woman of big dreams. Uh, I've seen I've seen you organize a massive event, and it's just always back to back success. Of course, there are downs. We're going to get into that shortly. Of course, there are times that you know the deep and all of that. But where do you see what you are currently working on? Where do you see it going in the next couple of years? Okay, so um, of course, um, there's always going to be clarity as you journey through everything. Everything is not just like oh this and all that but i know that we are building a community where we're going to be having the world's finest writers authors digital content creators in africa i mean coming from africans actually because mm. you know this thing you said at the beginning where you said something like if you want to hide something from a black man put it in a book we are, are, are cancelling that like right from Cancel. our community we are that. <laughs> and that's one thing i, I love i like from what Fola, um, Fola said where she talked about do you even read the privacy details before you use these apps and all that. That's very, very important. We want to encourage writers to actually be readers because sometimes you can even go in through a contract and because you did not read, just you didn't read it. And there are two ways of reading actually. You can read to get the information, then you can read again to understand what that information is saying. So, but people are not reading so fast. So we want to change the narrative about reading and writing as well. So read with clarity, write with clarity. So that's the that's the part we are towing. You know, and you know, future things are going to be coming up for us eventually as well. We've done events, we've done competitions where you are improving your creative writing skills and your public speaking skills. I mean, we just finished one there, so we are going to be raising the world's finest public speakers, the world's finest writers, smart thinkers, smart readers. Why should we going to change the world with their stories? Yeah, mm. so that's just where we are going. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love where it's heading, and I wish you all the very best. But share with us quickly. What is one, what what would you say is your biggest challenge on this journey so far? Biggest challenge. I think the biggest challenge would be like, um, 
Uh, what's the biggest challenge now? <laughs> um, I think for me, for me, for me personally, let me, let me talk about my own personal um, stuff. I'm, I'm a very serious introvert, right? I always like to be on my, in my space. Like, I don't like coming out to do plenty of things. Like, I'm hosting this, I'm hosting that, I'm hosting it. Because, I mean, if you are, if anybody can relate, you're an introvert, you just want to be all by yourself. I'm reading a book, I'm writing my book, and all that. I just, in fact, all the time I was in a house, and then someone was like, Wait, were you around? Like, I thought you traveled because they don't even see me and all that. So, I mean, coming out from that personality and then serving people, I mean, I have over 100,000 writers of my community. It means that people are waiting for me to actually come out and show. So, mm. it's not like, uh, you know, managing that personality of, okay, I'm an introvert, but I mean, this at this point, you need to come out. I think that's the major um, thing for me personally. That's what I would say. So, how then, do you, how on do the you other manage part of, it? You how said, do you manage it then? How do you manage it so that in case any introvert here is watching you, they will okay. not keep, you know, using their introvertedness as a crutch for not being the people that they've been called to be or serve the people they've been called okay, to be. Okay, I think the very first step is to have a why, have a strong why, have a strong reason for what you do. Yeah, that would, you need to have a strong why that would take you up in the morning, wake you up in the morning and then go execute. And then your, your why can be anything. I'm talking about impact. Impact can be profit-driven, it can be fulfillment driven or uh, whatever it is, but just write it down that hey, even if you're an introvert, for example, you're writing your full-time job, or if you are um if you're an introvert and you don't want to go out there and showcase your work, you know that nobody's going to come and give you the resources that you need where you are. So you have to come out of your show. That that could be a very good reason. So sometimes when you have a strong reason, when I know that hey, I need to actually be up and doing because this is what pays my views and this is what you know. Uh, people are actually loving about my work, so I'm not going to hide on that. So that's my own strong, that's part of my own strong reason that, hey, because of this, mm. I would still show up. So have a strong um, why, and don't let your introversion turn into laziness, that, oh, I'm lazy, I don't want to do this thing, and all that, and then you just start blaming other people for your, I see a lot of your, especially young people, you know, you want to do something, and then you are you're like, oh, I, I wish this thing happened for me, I wish the other person did this for me, yeah, all, all those excuses are coming from your your introversion, you're hiding, putting them mm. under yourself. So quit excuses and just go out there. Have a strong way. That's just a major reason. That's just a major uh, factor that can help you to come out of your show and all that. So mm. people see me do a lot of people. They don't know that. She's a very serious person. Good day. If they leave you, you would just <laughs> have to in, be on your seriously, own. Seriously, if they leave me, I will just like disappear, like just go off and all that. But I know I have a work to do. I have serious work to do out there and you know recently we're talking about my my book that is going to be distributed to over one million years around the world right we're going to be doing that the free book and that's a massive impact project which i've been um uh, strongly led to do and all that so mm. i can't say i'm an introvert i'm not going to come out and it's going to happen i'm working towards mm. that so and that's course, just, just have needed mind. to print these books one million is not yeah free. so we're going to be having like people <laughs> who want to donate and partner with us and all those things we're going to actually do that because every my 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 sense of fulfillment comes from someone just not making mistakes in life. Like if I know this thing, then why should you go and do it? There's a quote I say like, uh, "It's a waste of mistakes to make the same mistakes that someone else has made. It's a hey, waste of mistakes to make the same mistakes okay. that someone else has made." That's my quote. I love it. 2019. <laughs> okay, but because I mean, why do you have to make those mistakes? So I'm like documenting all the mistakes that I've heard people share. Who have given permission to share I've, my own mistakes I've made to I'm documenting them in that book and distributing it for free to as many young people as possible. That's what gives gives me fulfillment, and I'm going to go out and do that. So everybody here has a dream to go out there and fulfill. So go out and do it irrespective of whatever it is. And if you're an extrovert, congratulations because your work is easy. If an extrovert like uh, uh like uh, EJ, yeah, you are successful already. There's nothing you need. <laughs> I <laughs> can tell you. <laughs> There is, such a thing, there is such a thing called overthinking it for the extrovert. It is overthinking okay. it as well. Like, ah, hey, am I not too much like this? Am I not doing am I not overdoing it like this? You know, sometimes I, I always wonder what's what's in the head of extrovert as well, because I'm like, okay, this and what how do you do this thing? Like, what do you have any challenge? Just tell me, like, do you have any challenge as an extrovert apart from overthinking something? Because I'm like, ah guys we do guys do we do well. have because we are also okay. like hyperactive sometimes we don't pay attention to details and so we just jump okay. 
and do it because you know we have the energy to do it. You just go head first without thinking. You know, you people in the each over they will calculate. Okay. Yes. Um. So they think like ten steps ahead. For extrovert, sometimes we don't think any step at all. We don't jump. Like, hey, there's a step here. Oh, yeah, let's go. It's <laughs> on the way. <laughs> when we get there, we'll find out. What's up? Exactly. It's on the way. They're like, ah, oh, I was supposed to carry left leg first. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, let's do it, right? So it's, it's, it's still, <laughs> we still have our own struggles. Too, but it's, it's interesting to know um, that, you know, we just need to understand our why. And that will push us to do more. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I love that quote again. It is a waste of mistake to make a mistake that somebody else has made. Nice so that. good. So good. <laughs> so good. Now, Fola, I mean, I'm going back to the your, your advocacy for inclusion and diversity, having more women in this space. And as you have said, there is not much women in this space. What do you think can be done? Or what are you currently doing? to change that narrative for women? <clears throat> okay, so I'm getting the word out there, right? And I've also noticed, I've also tried to do a root cause analysis, right? Mm. Why is it that women, you know, are not really looking to go into the space? And I've noticed that for a lot of women, it's because most, it's not easy juggling a family, and a career mm. at the same time, especially in this part of the world, right? So it seems like that's the why, you know, as Eno has said, the why. So the why in this case for a lot of women is, I just can't do both. But the good news, which I'm trying to put out there, right, is you can have it all. Mm. Cyber security is such a nice space. There are so many, okay, well, not so many. There are hybrid jobs. There are remote jobs. You don't have to go into the office, right? Personally, I don't even like going into, into the office. I feel like all that long commute is just a waste of time, right? I can use that time doing something more productive for my organization. So the why is because a lot of people believe that, you know what, as a woman, and you also know that as women, I was watching something yesterday and a lady was saying, as a woman, it's almost like you're a second citizen right mm. there are certain things or the world is in such a way that as women there are just certain activities that women must do right but the world is also changing so women would say oh you know we want to be independent we want to do this but when it's actually time for them to take that step maybe cultural barriers i don't know what to attribute it to but basically what i'm doing is I'm speaking to a lot more women. And what I've noticed is when I talk to some of them, they also want me to talk to their husband. So I'm also doing that, right? To say, mm. okay, this is what it is. I can assure you that this job, nothing is going to change significantly. You're still going to have work-life. I'm also a huge advocate for work-life balance, work balance. Right? Mm. Especially for those that live in this part. You don't have helpers unless maybe you're super rich. So you wear like how many hats together? Mm. Why mother or God? you have so many hats, right? So there are still ways around juggling all of this. Now, the other aspect is for a lot of women, they also feel like, hmm, so I, have a, I need to study computer science. Well, that's no problem. I can't code. That is also no problem. So what I'm doing right now with my company is putting that word out there. Whether you have no proud tech background, whether you don't have any technical degree, whether you don't want to go into technicalities. Some people don't like all that, you know, technical. Once they hear technology, they shut off. All right. So I'm just trying to get that word out there, you know, spreading the news to everyone that, I mean, come to cybersecurity. It is interesting. Mm. It is rewarding. There's good work life balance, job opportunities, high income. I mean, if you ask me now, I can't tell you one bad reason, you know, maybe why I'm in cybersecurity, but I want to leave cybersecurity. The way I see it is, it's only going to keep expanding, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever your skill sets, whatever issues or whatever excuses you have, you're going to find somewhere for you within the cybersecurity space. Mm -hmm. I would also like to say here that, you know, as a woman, and even the industry, they are aware of this. Right now, there is a huge talent shortage within cybersecurity. So this is, just go online and put it on Google, mm. right? So right now, organizations, NGOs, the government, everybody 
is trying to work trying you to towards train. initiatives to bring mm. people into the cyber security space, especially women, right? Mm. And for me, not even just women, but black women, because we're so strong. Like, Absolutely. I feel like as black women, some of us undervalue ourselves in terms of what we're bringing to the table. We have so much to give, right? As long as you believe in yourself, you have the right mindset. There's nothing you can achieve. Right. As long as you are ready to put into the work, you're right. ready to learn, right? And you believe in yourself. Another issue I've noticed is what you call imposter syndrome. <laughs> right? So again, that is That's not a new. Huge one. Mm -hmm. Right? Every even the best of us, right? Still have imposter still syndrome. Boring. So what I would just say is believe in yourself, right? Rome was not built in a day. Even the people that you read about, they started from somewhere. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no child that woke up overnight and knew cybersecurity. But in the world of today, you already know so much, right? You know what not to do. You know you should not be sharing your personal information. You should not put it out there. So a lot of people are already security aware of the do's and don'ts right? The only difference is you're going to make a career out of it. So whether you're an introvert, you're an extrovert, I mean, whatever the reason is, there is somewhere for you. So it's just pushing the word out there. And the funny part is a lot of people are still struggling to understand the fact that tech is not just about coding, right? Technology space is really, really broad. The mm -hmm. cyber security space is really, really broad. What I tell people, there are two key sides. You have the technical rules, and then you have the non-technical rules. So when I say non-technical rules, well, there's still some technicality to it, but oh, it's yeah. not as technical as the other side. So mm -hmm. if you don't want to be too technical, there are certain areas you can look at. I mean, for example, you have cyber security, governance, risk, and compliance. These are already skill sets that people already have. Right, everyone mm. here. Before you make an investment, you're going to think, you, you think about the risk. You assess yeah. the risk. What is the likelihood? What is the impact? So there are a lot of transferable skills that people have that would help them su succeed in the cybersecurity mm. space. So if you're a woman listening to this, please, 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 we're looking for you. Right, oh, and the good okay. thing is, you will be super proud of yourself once you get mm. it. And you're like, oh, so it's not that bad, right? Mm. That's 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 really interesting to know. Um, and I hope you have um, um, access to initiatives, or you yourself as a company or as a as a business owner, are uh, open to collaborating with other um, organizations who really want to uh, make a difference in in this in this space. And I don't know if you have any initiative for the African market outside of Canada. Do you? If you do, please quickly talk about it. Because I recently just, I literally just met somebody who is really interested. She's in the tech space. She's in the Middle East. And she's like, we need more women. And she's really interested in um, extending her social impact to yeah. the African community and especially for the girl child. So I know she's interested in that. So for me, my ears are now, after that conversation, every time I hear it, I'm like trying to connect the dots if I can be that connected factor between, you know, the parties involved. So if you have any initiatives like that, please let us know um, about it so that we know how to plug, plug, plug this in. Okay, so yes, I'm looking to collaborate, you know, with companies, with individuals, with NGOs. But um, what we do at We Infinite Consulting is we provide mentorship. We also provide hands-on training. Now, we get, you know, people participate from all over the world because it is okay. a virtual class. Virtual. Now, because, you know, for currency difference, right? So what we do is we provide a huge discount to people coming from Africa. Oh, I see. Yeah, so that's what we do to make sure that, you know, financial reasons you know it's is not, not enough a barrier or is not a barrier exactly so that's what we do but for sure we're looking to collaborate and our next cohort is coming up in august so we're just putting the word out there as many people as you know are interested or they could you know look up my website you can also have a call with one of our career advisors the main problem here is people <laughs> Have the right information 
they assume is maybe five minutes, 15 minutes, just have a call. And, you know, a personalized call where you're able to tell the person that, oh, this is where I am right now. This is where I want to be. More like a career mapping, all right? So mm. we also provide that service for free to people to help them map their careers, identify the transferable skills they have. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for that. And I hope that anybody's going to watch this later can also leverage that, get that information, get informed so that you can make an informed decision for yourself, for your loved ones around you. And now, um, I want to, to, to speak to um, people who are going to watch this or people who are listening to this, who are afraid of sharing their stories. Because you have talked about, you know, that see, there's somebody out there that needs to hear your story, whose, whose life is going to change direction just because you came out and told your story, whether it's on the good side or on the negative side, the point is that you're inspiring them. What would you have to say to somebody who is like, they're like so afraid <laughs> for, for whatever reason to just put their stories out? What would be your word to bring them out of that fear? Okay, I think the very first step, uh, because the solution to every problem is in identifying the cause of that problem, right? So mm. when you feel, feel like you are holding yourself back, you need to ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Is it that I don't know how to write? Because some people really want to share their stories, but they know how to pen it down. They know how to write. So is that the mm. problem? Or you're afraid of what people are going to say about it? Or what exactly is the problem? So when you are able to identify what the root cause of that feeling is, you can then find a solution. If, you're, if, you're, if your fear is, oh, I don't know how to write, then you have to start writing. And people ask me, how do I learn how to write? You don't learn how to write by phoning your hand and just saying, I don't know how to write. No, you have to start writing. And in starting, you become better. And practice will make you become a better writer. So just start mm -hmm. there. And most of I tell people that the first thing you write is not the final product. Most of those final, those fantastic books that you read, that's not how they wrote it in, in, in raw form. That's not the draft. They have to go through processes, process of editing. So when I'm editing books, for example, there are processes of editorial, you know, editing the book actually. That by the time you see the finished product, you'll be like, is this the same book that I saw? <laughs> so you can put it out there, start by putting out your draft and then start refining it. Get skilled up, learn, learn everything you can learn and then keep writing. And then if because of the, um, your fear of like staying back is that, okay, I'm afraid of what you need to ask yourself. Are you really ready to share this story? Because sometimes we say storytelling, storytelling. There's some story that you are not ready to share. And as far mm. as you are not feeling happy to share, it's just relax. There's no hurry in like trying to share something. And I always say that you don't start sharing stories that you no know, stories should actually inspire. You understand? Some people they are going through certain things and they don't share the story. The story does not have any if the story doesn't have any meaning to actually like push someone to do something. <laughs> then and then they are they are hurting inside and then they are hot and all that it doesn't help all right so if you mm -hmm. feel like oh i'm not ready to share this story now own your story whenever you feel ready to share it share it. but know that if this story could have gone out and someone out there has either lost his or her life or has gotten to the same done the same mistake you've made then you've not achieved your fulfillment because that's what i said it's a waste of mistake to make the same mistake that someone else has made so because of your fear, someone else is making your mistakes when they could have been better if you had shared it. So you need to balance it and ask yourself, am I really ready to share this? Why am I not ready? All right. Can I just inspire someone there? And if you're someone like me, who oh, fulfillment means helping someone out there to become better, then that's a good reason to start sharing. So that's what I can say. Fantastic. I love, 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 love it. I want to ask you a final question is, do you offer like ghostwriting services, you know, somebody who is confused, like, okay, they, like you said, they know they want to write a book, but they don't even, they know, they've even started, like, they've tried to put their thoughts together, but it's just like, there's a block, like, ah, I don't know, and I need help. Do you offer that kind of services, you know, let us know what, what how you help people. Okay. Um, yeah, you know. so I, I do ghostwriting, and I also do editorial service, like, editing your book, so I take it from the process of your book idea conception, because sometimes you have a fantastic message, I mean, for my work with authors, some people have fantastic messages in their head, but they can't put it out there because they lack the, 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 the skill of structuring your book. And if you want to write a brilliant book, there's a way to structure it. So I do that as a book consultant, taking you from idea conception to the launch of that book. All right. So I do ghost writing, editing, coaching on writing, everything that has to do with building your brand from scratch to uh, influence as a writer. So I do all that. Fantastic. 
fantastic finally finally guys i hope that you've got to value today i don't know if anybody is still here listening to us or watching us if you have any questions please type them in the comment section now because we are rounding this off in just a few minutes final words we have to say because this is being streamed on a women's platform right women of rubies so it means that the the 90 percent you know sometimes when we gather together like that women so men used to sneak in like what are they doing there? <laughs> <laughs> but 90, 90 at least 90 or 98 percent are women what will be your final words for the women from your perspective with what you do please share with us tonight as we begin to round this off and if there are any questions we'll take them after your find after your words yeah yes please go ahead okay. i can go first okay <laughs> so my final words for women out there listening to this is you're strong, you're beautiful, mm. both in and out. You're amazing, right? You can do so much. There's so much you're yet to achieve that you can explore. So you need to believe in yourself. You can unlock so many possibilities. So don't be bogged down about the reasons why you cannot achieve. Have the right mindset. The mind is so powerful, right? Once you set your mind to something, it's easier to achieve it. So embrace a growth mindset. Leverage a lot of transferable skills you have. Whether you are a mother, do you know what it is to multitask, taking care of kids? You know, whatever stage you're in right now, you can do it. So I'm just going to leave that word out there for you to believe in yourself. Always remember the purpose behind your choice, whatever choice you've made. Fantastic. I love it. Believe in yourself. You are powerful than you take credit for. Thank you so very much, Bola. And all, please, what's your last word for us tonight? Okay, so I'm a lover of quotes. So let me just start by, <laughs> let me just end by reading. <laughs> let me read a quote that resonates with my own journey. Um, it's by Wilson Churchill. He said, success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. All right. So no matter where you are, if you feel like you've tried something and it failed, that's not the end of it. Because you can't even mm. see, you know, the future. You don't know what's ahead of you. Sometimes I, I ask myself, what if God just put our future in front of our heads? Like, this is what the future is. Sometimes you'll be like, oh my God, is that what God is planning for me? Oh, I should do this thing. And, but because you don't see the future, you begin to doubt yourself. So no matter where you are now, if you are in a failure period, just so that it's temporary, all you need to do is dust yourself and keep pushing. And then success is ahead. I love it. I love it. Keep failing and failing and failing forward without losing yes. your steam, without losing your enthusiasm, knowing that you are strong, especially as a woman, you have the capacity to be anything that you want to be. And especially if you can see it, you can definitely achieve it. So stop second guessing yourself. Stop allowing imposter syndrome steal from you. And as I speak to you, I speak to myself. I know we're in this together, but also find a community of like-minded people, people who are going somewhere, people who believe that they are not just here to exist, but they are here to make a difference, to make an impact in the lives of people that comes along their way as they sojourn through life. So involve yourself, find yourself, find your way to come in the circle of those kind of people so that you can stay consistent. On the day you are low, you can look up and say, ah, Eno came forward today. I am going to go ahead. Ah, look at Fola. She's still showing up regardless. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, right? So I hope that you are encouraged tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Until we come away again next month, with another set of beautiful women doing amazing stuff. This is her success story. Just before we go, how can people connect with you too? Because now, I don't know if you are more, like share with us your most active um, social media platforms so that people can go check you out and follow you. Yep. Okay, so for me, um, I think my most active platform is Instagram. So okay. uh, my handle is Winfinite IT Consulting. So Winfinite as in win, so a winning mindset and F-I-N-I-T-E. So Winfinite IT Consulting. Okay, or you could also find me on... Why that name, 
<sighs> so the win <laughs> it's almost like winning infinitely infinitely right? oh yeah. i see <laughs> and if you want to reach out to me personally, you could check for me on LinkedIn. So my name on LinkedIn is Fa Shadi Adiguke. So my Shadi is without H. Wait, though. This is your Winfinite. It says Nigeria. NG. No, Winfinite. I oh, consulting. consulting. See the NG in the front. Be like, N. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Okay. And you said your name is Fala Shade on LinkedIn. Yes, Fala Shade Adegoke. Fala is my short name. Mm, okay, fantastic. Adegoke. Are you related to both my or Adegoke? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fantastic. Thank you so very much. Yes, Eno, please. How can we connect with you? Okay, just um, follow me on Facebook. I'm more active on Facebook and no Sam on Facebook. And then join my Facebook One and only. <laughs> One <Yes>. and only. <laughs> join my Facebook community, Brilliant Entrepreneurs and Writers Academy. I, I stay more on Facebook, but I'm still learning Instagram. Um, I'm not really active there, but Instagram is Enno underscore Sam and all that. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So Enno underscore Sam, but she's big on Facebook. And no, Sam, she's one and only. Check her out. She's she has branded herself, eh? Like, see her shares to end no. Everywhere you see her, and no, Sam. Yes, and no, Sam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very short and simple. Also, very, very. <laughs> Thank you so very much. And in case you want to check me out as well, this is the Energetic EJ across social media platforms. Go check me out. Thank you for being here. God bless you all. Thank you so much, beautiful ladies. Um, I want to wish you success, more success, because you're already successful, and that's why you're sharing your story with us. So I want to wish you more success on your journey, and especially on your impact journey as you impact more lives uh, with what you do and how you show up on a daily basis. God bless you. Have a Thank fantastic you so much, night. EJ. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. See you next month. Bye-bye.